Hey everyone, this is Pay for Life, and today's P4O review, we'll be taking a look at a review copy of uh, Robot Heroes R01 Durden and Barney, their version of a masterpiece scaled slugfest and overkill. Um, if you guys know, don't know Robot Hero, I think this is their first original design. They did a KO of one of the masterpiece sound waves. I think there are a couple companies, two or three companies that did one. I don't know anything about that KO, but um, this is an original design. From them so let's see how well it works so this is not the first third-party company that's done one I think KFC did one before so if I could if I, if I remember correctly and um, and I did a quick look at them um, in terms of a video review just to do my homework and so I'm gonna do some comparisons with original G1 toy as well as not comparisons but I guess my opinions about these in in comparison to the G1 toy and KFC's all right, so packaging review, you get a small box that's pretty much the same size and look as the Masterpiece cassettes um, that came from T Takara. You can see a nice artwork in the front of the cassette mode and their alt modes or dyno modes. On the back here, you really don't get anything except warning and some more kind of grayed out images. You got Barney on this side and Durden on this side. Actually, out of the packaging, you do get a big one-sheeter for instructions. One side you have Barney, and the other side you have Durden. And they're cassette boxes; so they're not too complicated. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and show the transformations off. They do come in a clamshell with some plastic baggies, just like the original toys that uh, the original official Masterpiece toys so that they come protected with their paint and their accessories. Uh, he does, they come out like this. So here is Durden and Barney. Let's actually scooch down a little bit really quickly. And then they come with two sets of accessories, this kind of solar array or solar panel gun for Durden and dual rocket launchers, missile launchers for Barney. Really quickly, let's look at their alt modes. As you can see here, they're molded in pretty good plastic. Um, they've, it seems pretty solid. I haven't handled the cave, any of the KFC ones before, I don't think, except maybe uh, the Auto Scout. Uh, and I don't remember where my Auto Scout is, so I can't do a quick comparison. It is not, I would say it's not as solid as the official uh, tapes, but still quite nice. You can see pink and green. You can see the dino head here and the tail here. All right. As well as Barney. Nice blue and silver and white. They have a few paint apps, but they're not that great. And it's hard to see because, especially with, with him, because neither side, um, with cassettes, you usually have like one side that's actually fairly clean and the other side is kind of messy looking. This one kind of has a, a mess on both sides. Like it's not, it doesn't look rectangular. At least this one looks rectangular on this side. Oh, actually this one's pretty good on both sides. In any case, that's what they look like. Very quickly, just to show off that they do work with Masterpiece oh, Soundwave. Let's go ahead and open up his chest. Stick these guys in. No problem. Oh, and kind of with the official Masterpiece, they get kind of stuck. But that's not so much the design problem of Robot here as it is the design mechanism for uh, Masterpiece Soundway's chest gimmick, which I still love. All right, scooching back down, let's go ahead and do individual reviews and transformation. We're gonna go transformation both ways just because they are simple um, and they are quick. So let's go with uh, Durden first, all right? so. Very G1-esque in the sense that you just pull down his tail and its head. Uh, where it differs is here. So the original G1 toy, from what I can tell, kind of auto-transforms. When you pulled it down, the, the spines or plates on the back came out. This one, you have a little lever or notch thingy. And I don't know, this is kind of weird. So sometimes when I transform it, it's nice and stable. And other times it wants to... Uh, go back in under its own weight. So I don't know how I'm doing it differently. Literally, I've transformed it three or four times 
and half the time it sticks up just fine and it doesn't even go down under pressure and other times it seems to want to do that but yeah in terms of transformation um, for the spines inferior to the G1 down here you have the legs this is where it gets a little bit different you twist here 90 degrees on both the front and back set of legs and then you splay them so that the toes kind of face forward on these ball joints and then you stretch out the legs there's one pin joint on the front legs, each of the front legs and on the back there's actually two so there's one here and one here so I guess kind of like the knee and ankle, I don't know what you want to call it so yeah, the, the hind legs have slightly more articulation not much, one extra pin and they're small, but it's nice that they're, that they're there alright let's go ahead and do Barney Barney's kind of cool, I think he's the one I prefer or I think it's more, a little bit more genius. So the head comes out on this pin joint here on a neck. And then you want to flip the, the two halves closed because they're the heads. But you want to flip out this little tab here. This little blue tab. So that when you have the two halves they actually stick together. And then you can bring the head down on the ball joint. Uh, as for the uh, rest of the transformation you want to pull out the tail which is tabbed in like that and then on the underside he has another kind of uh, t-tab here uh, you might be able to see it right there and what that does is holds the uh, two halves together so when you transform this guy what you're going to want to do is bring these two halves down and around like this but you don't want to close it up you want to close it around this t-tab or i-tab whatever, whatever you want to call it like so this is pretty cool. Rotate this down 180 degrees. These are going to be the hind legs. The upper arms, you just want to rotate 180 degrees as well. And then fold them forward on those ball joints. And then fold the little pins there. Rotate these forward and bring the legs down. And as with uh, Durden, he also has two points of articulation on the hind legs and one point of articulation on the forearms. The weapons do plug in. They can plug into the arm or actually the, the cassette holes. Oh and I failed to show it off. We'll do it when we go back. But he, they do come with uh, cassette holders. I did show them. I just forgot to actually stick them in. I'm guessing they're just KOs of of the cassette tapes. The official ones. Yeah, I guess they don't have like, I thought they had like transformers on here or something like that before. But anyway, we'll put those in the background. Yeah, let me see if I can get this a little bit lower angled. Make these look a little bit better. And then these would go on either side of Durden. These are silver painted, so you will you will get some paint rub on the uh, pegs when they go in and out of the um, out of the the peg holes which is a bit of a bummer to give you a sense of scale here he is with rumble or uh, frenzy frumble here he is with laser beak here they are so they're tiny little guys and I don't really know much about the G1 characters. Um, I know they came out in like one episode of the G1 show. And I think maybe in the Headmasters or something like that. Um, but apparently doing some research. He, they do exist in both uh, the G1 American cartoon. As well as uh, I guess later on in some of the comics. And so, so such and so forth with Sound Blaster as well. Alright so let's go ahead and get these guys transformed. back. Oh so let's, let's actually do some review. So. As I said, um, I think this guy is a bit inferior, especially if you can't, I don't know, your copy, your final copy might have a better tabbing here. Um, but the transformation is not all that inspired. It, the only real advantage was the widening of the legs, so you're just not a flat stegosaurus. Um, but the, the, the panel here, though, doesn't seem that good on mine, and it doesn't auto-transform. 
like the G1 toy. So that's kind of a big trade-off. I felt like they could probably have done that if they could have done it 20 years ago, 30 years ago, actually, in, in the G1 toy. This guy I like. Um, I think his transform transformation is really cool. I don't know if I think he looks that much like Slugfest, though, especially with his kind of proportions. Uh, I'm not sure. So it's it's different. Articulation-wise, this guy does have his little neck pin and his tail pin, mostly for transformation. Again, ball joints at all of the legs, but also that swivel at the base. So you can get a good range on the legs here, especially with the back. They're tiny, but it's nice to have the, the joints in place. Yeah, I feel like I might be doing something wrong here, but I can't figure out if it's me or if it's just the figure itself. With, with um, Barney, he does have double ball joints here that kind of work together. You can get a little bit of swivel. Not really, though. Um, his neck does also have a couple of swivel points, pins. But again, that kind of splits up the, the face in half if you twist it any which way, which you don't really want to do. Ball joints at the shoulders and pins at the little tiny T-Rex arms. Ball joints at the hips. And then two pin joints on the hind legs. The tail does have two pin joints. Uh, and is on a ball joint as well. And I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm mistransforming it. But you might be able to. You might be able to flip this around. I don't know if this. I don't think. Let me, let me check the instructions. I don't want to be wrong here. Um, but you might be able to flip the tail upside down. I guess you theoretically could, but it's not for transformation. The only reason why I was wondering that is because it actually has some detail, painted detail on the underside of the tail. Here, let me focus. Under top side of the tail, yellow and... But if you do want to use this ball joint, I'd be very careful because the ball joint peg is really, really... The stem is really thin. Um, so I don't know if I'm... Yeah, it feels like I'm twisting the stem rather than the actual ball joint itself because of the, the tolerances. So be wary of that. Again, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be how you work it, but that's the only reason I would think that they would even go to the trouble of painting the, the underside of the tail. Instructions don't say to flip it around, though. All right, so that's really it. Um, I would say this guy's probably inferior um, to some of the other options, like even the G1 toy. This guy, I kind of like, uh, especially his transformation. So it's going to be for you deciding whether you want this design. I really would have liked if he could open his mouth. That's one thing that neither of them have. Um, and when I think of like beasts or dinos or something like that, I really want to have articulated jaws. That's just me. So let's go ahead and transform these guys back. Take off the, oops, pop, the, pop this guy's shoulder off. The tolerances are good though, so that, that was just my fault. Take off the weapons. Alright, let's go ahead and transform third and first. Let's go ahead and just collapse the spine just because it's, it's doing that by itself already. Fold up the front legs and have the feet flat down. And then you want to twist them in like this so that the toes go in, inward. Same thing on this one, you want to bend at the upper joint and get it squared off. And same thing, have the feet flat and then tilt the toes inward. Rotate these, I think this way. Uh, it probably doesn't matter either way. It just whatever side you want the ball joints to show. And then rotate the heads up on these double hinges and the tail up on the double hinges. I think I prefer this. And since I didn't do it before, let's go ahead and do that now. Can these in somehow. Uh, there you go. I had it upside down. I always forget that there's an orientation here. Slug fit. Uh, overkill. So go ahead and fold up the, the tail. Let's just do that now since it's right in the way. From here, we're going to fold up the little dino arms. You're going to want to open up, up like this. Oh no, actually you want to straighten the dino arms. I'm sorry. Straighten the dino arms and flip them around 180 degrees like this if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Fold up the legs all the way, flip them out, and do 180 degrees. And you'll see them kind of key into place with the upper arms, like so. Split the body, releasing it from that tab. 
straighten it out like this. Flipped it all the way. So it came from here, flipped it all the way out and around like that. Close up the little tab in the chest. Open up the head, flip in that little tab. And then you're gonna want to just push it all the way down. They have a little notch on each side for half of the horn. There we go. Open up the case. So like this, all the other way. Which way is it for this guy? There we go. There we go. We have both R01 cassettes back in their case, along with their accessories, which are just gonna hang out back here. So final thoughts on Robot Heroes R01 set, Durden and Barney. Um, I think it's gonna come down to aesthetics. So compared to the G1, I think this guy is mediocre in terms of just transformation, lack of transformation, or plus or minus on transformation. The look, I think looks pretty good. I wish the spine, at least on this review copy I got, held a little bit better um, in place. So I think this is the weaker of the two. Compared to the KFC one, I'm not sure. Um, I actually like the look of this one a little bit better, but uh, the transformation on the KFC one looks a lot more involved and interesting. As for Barney um, or Overkill, I think I like this one um, a lot. It, the transformation is kind of cool. Um, I think it's better than the G1 toy. The aesthetics will be kind of the driving factor on this one as well, I think. If you like the look of this and the proportions, that which are... I think pretty good to the G1 toy, um, but kind of wonky in terms of maybe a, a dinosaur or Tyrannosaurus or whatever this is supposed to be. Um, you can decide for yourselves whether you like this one or the KFC one. The KFC one I didn't like as much, um, but it's, again, I think it's going to be a select per, um, preference on those. These should be pretty representative of the retail release because they are review copies. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below as always. If you like the video, and it helped you with your decision making process, please give it a like, share, and subscribe. And lastly, I wanted to let you know that they are doing more cassettes. Uh, a lot of people always ask that about the cassette series, whether they're gonna do more. Um, they are gonna be doing at least two more, which was Beast Box and Squawk Talk, which combined to do Squawk, uh, Squawk Talk? What is it, Squawk? Squawk Box, yeah, Squawk Box when they combine, so it's a combiner cassette. I uh, always get the names mixed up. But in any case, they are going to be uh, showing, uh, releasing those as well. They showed off some pictures of uh, the separate alt modes, cassette modes, and the combined mode, which looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's all for today, everyone. Hope you have a good one.